how drunk is too drunk to consent? In the often grey world of sexual assault, the question of whether someone can consent when intoxicated causes the most amount of debate. The news is flooded with stories of rape allegations involving alcohol, from high-profile figures to university students. When does a tipsy hookup become sexual assault? when like you're drunk and you don't know what you're doing yeah and i hope like the guy does realize that and he's like no no you're too drunk you're too drunk but there probably are some cases like when a guy's not drunk and the girl is drunk and then he kind of just does it yeah there's been a lot of situations where you get two drunk people and they both wake up the next morning and they're both not really sure what happened <clears throat> but i think when one person is a lot drunker than someone else then that is not right so i've been in that situation before and I, I wouldn't really say like he didn't do it without my consent, but I didn't really want to do it. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? I've come to hear Bethany's story. I blamed myself for for being drunk with a guy that wasn't my boyfriend. I blamed myself for wearing revealing clothing. I blamed myself for drinking and not being aware of my surroundings. I went out for a drink after uni. One of the guys came over to us just making conversation. I'd seen him once or twice before out and about, so I didn't feel like unsafe with him or anything. We probably got about two or three bottles of wine throughout the night, and I had noticed that it was mostly me drinking it. He didn't really touch any of the alcohol. When that bar closed and he said, oh, do you want to come back to mine and we'll watch a video? Um, we'd been having a great night, so I was like, yeah, sure. I told my boyfriend where I was went back to this guy's house and because we'd been out in the fresh air all of the alcohol suddenly just hit me mm. and I sort of remember going into his room I remember sitting on his bed and then I remember him trying to kiss me and I kept saying no I've got a boyfriend no I've got a boyfriend and then I start to sort of fade in and out of consciousness um, I remember him on top of me um, having sex with me and I kept turning my head away from him um, and saying, I've got a boyfriend, I've got a boyfriend. I told myself I was upset because I'd cheated on my boyfriend and I didn't tell anyone that I'd been raped until two years later when I finally broke down and told my boyfriend because the guilt had been building up for so long. He kept asking me details about what had happened and I kept saying to him, I didn't want to. I kept saying, no, I kept telling him about you and he said, so you were raped then? And it was only then that he said that, that it clicked in my head that actually, yes, I had been raped and I finally admitted it to myself. I still battle with it to this day, um, where I have to sort of remind myself I did say no. And I was drunk, I was passed out, I couldn't move, I couldn't push him off me or anything like that. I was, I had no control over what was happening. Some bars around the UK are trying to tackle drunk sexual behavior with the Ask for Angela campaign. If you're on a first date, which is always awful for everyone, yeah. you go to the bar and you, if you're not feeling comfortable with who you're with or anything like that, you just want to get out of that situation, you go to the bar and you ask for Angela, so oh, hi, is Angela there please, or can I talk to Angela? And that's code for the bar staff or any staff in any venue to realise that you want some sort of help, if you're under some sort of distress. That's then the bar staff's responsibility to either call you a taxi or get you out of that situation, maybe take you back. Um, into the cellar or the somewhere behind the bar. It's not just women in an LGBT venue. It could be a man coming to the bar asking about a man, or a woman about a woman, yeah. about a woman, a woman about a man. It could be any number of things. Right, right, so right. I've seen loads of cases where some guy will be too drunk, like proper hitting on a girl, and they're getting really like shovy and pushing. Yeah. And I've just had to tap them. Do like, you know what? Leave her alone. I'm gonna have to get the door start. Right. And that usually sorts out. Like, like, okay, girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you, either of you been grabbed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> multiple times. On uh, yeah. one night? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just annoying. Right. Like, we just want to have a good time, and then there's guys like trying to like, grab us and like, go away. I personally don't think of it at all as harassment. I just think, oh, he's grabbed my ass. It must look good in this dress or jeans. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. I'm just going to walk away, hope he doesn't mind, and then that's it for the night. As bad as it sounds like, you're in a club. That's club behaviour to me. Yeah. Like, it sounds bad, but girls have just got used to it. Yeah. Like, I know girls, and they're just like, oh, yeah, I know, it's just something that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where does the responsibility lie when two people have been drinking? 
I've come to Hampshire to meet the sexual offences police. Two individuals could go back to their student accommodation, they could have sex, and one of those parties could say yes, could verbally say it, but actually they're in a lack of drink where we're saying you actually can't consent to having sex at that time. So it's quite problematic to investigate, and some suspects don't even realise that what they've done is unlawful. If they're both drunk, it's even harder to qualify who knew at which point you were too drunk to consent. And if I was to give you a scenario, a young male, young girl have met up in a, a bar not far from here, um, and you can see on the CCTV, they're interacting, they're really enjoying their night out, they're having drinks together. When they leave together, you can clearly see that she cannot walk, she's being sick, but the female wakes up the next day and knows physically that she's had sex but she has no recollection of having sex. Can anyone in those circumstances have the ability to consent? If you don't have the ability to consent, then that's rape. Do you get a sense that there's still an element of sort of victim blaming? Very much so. Just because she's drunk, she's not asking for it. Just because she's wearing a short dress, she's not asking for it. If she's very, very drunk, she's vulnerable, but she's not asking for it. We're not here to tell people that they can't drink. You can go out and, and get drunk. It's great that we live in this culture where we have the freedom of choice to do that. But the problem is, in some cases, they're so drunk um, that actually you can't consent to having sex. And it's that grey area where I think actually a lot of females leave themselves very vulnerable and equally so do a lot of young men because you're just at risk of being tomorrow's suspect if you go out and have sex with drunk males or females. We notice the more drunk a girl is, the more boys are around them. Yeah. So if a girl's absolutely drunk, yeah. she's surrounded by boys. Yeah. If I see a girl in that type of state, she's staggering around, she can't even finish the sentence, is that what you're attracted to? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But for some other guys, they probably see that as like an easy target, so I don't know. Can you tell me what, what happened to you? So I invited a few friends over, and then one of them also brought one of his friends, I got very, very drunk, and I ended up having to be put to bed. And this guy that my friend had brought, after everyone left, decided to come and have sex with me while I was in my own house, in my own room. I woke up at one point in the middle of the night and he was on top of me. I tried to pull away. I think he took it as encouragement. I passed out again. How did you know the next morning that something had happened. I remember kicking him out um, and I was just like, oh, I had an awkward one night stand. It was only when I was talking to one of my friends and told him what happened that he was like, that was rape. Um, and how do you think our culture and our society perceive rape victims? There's this sense of real rape versus fake rape. Anything that isn't a, a guy in a bush or mm. on the street in the middle of the night. People instantly try to make excuses for the guy, try to blame the girl, and if you openly say that you're raped, it's seen as you are crying rape, not as it was a genuine thing that happened. I'm attending the morning briefing with the Sexual Offences Police Unit to see what cases have been reported over the weekend. A girl who was drinking in Southampton City Centre left with a male. She awoke in an address, having been sitting on herself with the underwear removed. A female um, had left a party with her student friends and was raped in an alleyway. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Following the meeting, I'm tagging along to investigate a wanted sexual assault suspect. At the moment, we're going out to the home address of the suspect. As a matter of urgency, we need to find out where he is. We know that he lives there with his mum, so I'm hoping by going to speak with her, I can try and get some finer details from her to where her son may be. Yeah, I've never been on a manhunt before. I'm not allowed to go in with her for obvious reasons, so I'm just basically waiting for her to come back and see if she's got any information on this guy. So what happened? What did she say? So um, she had loads of really useful information. So now that we have all of this information, we can really start narrowing yeah. it down because I can start doing border control checks. So this manhunt has just got much bigger? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you should assess whether the person is drunk or not. I mean, so you don't want to have a problem in the morning, do you? Thing, as many as like campaigns you can do for men still justify like, oh she was wearing a short skirt, she was wearing this, like they still like use that as like, oh it's okay. What's your saying? Oh the way that I dress does not mean yes. Love it. <laughs> it's disturbing to think that often victims feel responsible. Can you tell me what happened to you? 
I was with a group of friends. A couple of the guys in the group were just serving out all the drinks to everyone. Everything went very hazy very quickly and I was vomiting a lot. We all walked back together and got a taxi to one of the guys' flats. And I remember slipping in and out of consciousness that night. I did notice that it was getting light again, so it must have been morning. It's when all my friends left. Suddenly, when it was quiet and I was asleep, I could feel that he, he started to touch me and, and remove my tights from my skirt. I was really floppy. I had absolutely no control over my whole body. And he just twisted me around. And then he started to, well, have sex with me. I just remember vaguely flashing images of his figure in front of me. I remember it hurting as well a lot. And I remember saying, I don't like it, no. And then eventually when he was done, he just rolled over and went to sleep. I didn't realise that what he did is rape. In my mind, I thought, I drank too much. I should have I should have fought back more. I should have made it clearer that I didn't want it. So I just blamed myself. I didn't realise what consent actually entails. And it, it means that both of you are in a sober enough and conscious enough state to say yes. We can debate the ability to consent when drinking, but clearly having sex with someone who's unresponsive or passed out is just wrong. We should keep having a conversation about what rape actually is. Maybe that would be the first step in helping victims shake feelings of blame and warn potential perpetrators to rethink their actions.